Hey, today it's going to be about, there's three topics on this one. These are um, not viewer questions, but kind of my questions. And the first thing I want to know is uh, Prince Edward, the Duke of Edinburgh, is he going to be the Duke of Edinburgh? And the second thing is about George Santos's marriage. Is that how he got to his U.S. citizenship? Because um, I don't think he was ever not gay. And then uh, the third one is Mike Pence, uh, his, those classified documents. And we'll do a few other questions along those lines, too. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So the whole thing about Prince Edward is that his father, uh, the Duke of Edinburgh, when he was alive, uh, had promised him that he would get that uh, dukedom uh, when he was gone. It would go over to him. And somehow uh, it's come into question. Charles is considered maybe giving it to Charlotte uh, for some reason. I probably should have looked into that. I knew, but now I've forgotten. But uh, to keep that uh, in uh, closer to the royal line, I think, because uh, uh, Prince Edward is a bit removed from the uh, status of inheritance and it had to do with that. Uh, so we'll ask questions about that. Then on George Santos, I believe that the way he got his U.S. citizenship is through marriage, by marriage, marrying that woman, and then they were divorced, and now he, I think he's married, or certainly he's involved with another man, and it looks like he always has been involved with men since the time he was young. Now, he doesn't claim to be bi, he doesn't claim to be straight, he claims to be gay. So, But then everything he says is a lie, so we'll see if we can clear some of that up. And then the third thing is Mike Pence, those classified documents that he has. I think he was as stunned as anybody else that they were in his in his possession. And so we'll find out, was that nefarious? Did somebody plant them on him? Was it just because, you know, they couldn't pack up his office until the day they were moving out because Trump refused to, um, you know, say that he lost the election and, in, and in, uh, invite uh, Biden into the White House. So that's what we're going to talk about. Those three things. Hope you like it. They're blowing smoke up my rear end so bad, I'm sending off smoke signals. <sighs> okay, so three topics today. And first we're going to see uh, Prince uh, Edward. So that's uh, King Charles' uh, youngest brother, Prince Edward. And uh, so the story goes that apparently their father, the Duke of Edinburgh at the time, uh, Prince Philip, uh, had uh, promised uh, that Edward would receive that uh, dukedom uh, uh, when he was gone. And uh, it looks like there was some hesitancy uh, on behalf of Charles uh, because he wanted to, it looks like, uh, convey that to Charlotte. And I believe the reason was to keep it uh, closer, to keep that uh, apparently very important dukedom uh, closer to the line of accession to the throne. Um, if I have that right. I, I think I do, but I may not have it exactly right. So you can Google that, see why. Why did Charles uh, hesitate on that to Duke them to Prince Edward? But it looks like now uh, the thought is that it's going to go to uh, Edward anyway. And then uh, George Santos, his marriage, and I believe that's how he got his uh, U.S. citizenship, and was it a fraudulent marriage for the purpose of just getting U.S. citizenship? And uh, Mike Pence, those classified docs, what the heck is the whole story behind all of that? But before we do anything, let's have just a moment, like I do, of meditation. Okay, so yeah, let's jump right into that uh, Prince Edward uh, situation. So what can the cards tell us? It's not so much about Prince Edward, and it's not so much about Charles-ish, but it's kind of um, the decision for this um, hesitancy with that uh, dukedom, uh, Prince of Ed, the, Ed, is it, 
Prince of Edinburgh, I guess. Um, so what is the reasoning behind that? What can the cards tell us along those lines? Let's first do uh, a couple, three cards maybe uh, about that. What can the cards tell us about the hesitancy of giving that dukedom to uh, Edward? First card, Knight of Wands. So this is planning. Wands are plans, actions, forward movement. The knight is the fighter for those things. And so this is the knight of wands, a knight of plans, someone willing to fight for that action. Who is this? Is this Prince Edward? Is this uh, Philip from uh, beyond? Uh, let's see what else we get. So another card, the Page of Cups. Well, that's interesting because it was a surprise. Cups are emotional, compassionate, and the Page of Cups always has a little surprise getting ready to jump out of there. And this was just a whisper. The page is just a suggestion, just an idea that's come to the royal court's uh, attention and uh, for it to perhaps act on. So was there some, some uh, someone brought this idea to King uh, Charles, uh, it looks like. Put them in the order that we're gonna draw them. And then the final card, for this situation is right here moving out of troubled water and this is a six of swords truth justice rules and law so um yeah so this seems to speak to that a little bit in my mind and what it says is that uh, something came to the attention of king charles regarding this dukedom was uh you know should he perhaps not uh, let it go the way his father had decided and um I've got a, in the back of my mind, I keep thinking that, yeah, Charles seems to be a wishy-washy uh, decider, okay? It looks like he makes decisions before he's fully thought them through. I could be totally wrong, just what's coming to my head. And that, uh, and so right off the bat, he had this uh, power to not uh, give that uh, dukedom to Edward and halted uh, until he had time to think about it more. And somehow the word got out because of all the people behind the scenes running that uh, firm. So, so that's the idea. The idea came to the attention of the court. Uh, it was a surprise. Uh, it was it, it's a it's a, a compassionate, um, uh, very emotional situation. Meant a lot to Edward, and that uh, dukedom is an important dukedom. And um, the whole idea was to move the whole thing out of troubled water. And what are we moving out of troubled water? Is is Charles moving his popularity? Uh, out of troubled water into something else. The public would see him going against the wishes of his father as as a as a you know a difficult thing. So that's how that seems to me. I think that accounts for the wishy-washy uh, nature of this decision. You know uh, that uh, his father would have discussed it with the queen. There would have been a lot of thought gone into that for his father leaving his will. I believe. And, uh, and so why does Charles feel that he needs to uh, chew it over again when a lot of careful decision went into it originally? So let's do uh, six cards, and hopefully the cards will tell us if it'll go to uh, Edward and any other uh, along that way. So six cards for a dyadic cross. So one, two, three, four, five, Six. And, you know, I talk more about this specific edition of cards at the end of the video. This was the, the are the cards designed specifically uh, in this exact way by Pamela Coleman Smith, who uh, came up with these uh, depictions uh, at the behest of uh, uh, Wait, and um, and so it's pretty interesting uh, how I come about these cards and how they came to me, how they were packaged. But anyway, back to uh, Prince uh, Edward and this dukedom. The signifier card then, ah, is exactly what I said. So this is the hangman, the signifier of this issue is looking at things from another perspective. For some reason, it was thought, let's chew this over again. Let's look at this, this appointment um, a bit more. Let's take another gaze at it from another perspective. The uh, challenge to that is exactly that card that we just had, and it's exactly right, the fighter for the uh, for that uh, uh, plan, okay, and I think this is in fact uh, Edward. I think he would have come back to his brother and said, "Listen, Dad left it to me, and uh, I hope that you'll reconsider." The basis of this whole thing is victory, okay. It is victory. Charles is looking to, and uh, wands are actions, plans, forward movement. Six of wands is uh, symbolizes victory very much for me. And, uh, and so this is Charles saying, how can I rack up as many victories and keep myself in a good public light 
um, always. And in the past of this reading for this issue is, oh yeah. So the Four of, of Swords is waiting, knowing when to stop and take a breath and not move forward until you really consider to think carefully. You've got the Three Swords here uh, warning you not to get up at the peril of being damaged by them. And then one sword by your side for protection, kind of. So yeah, that kind of makes sense. In the sky of this reading for uh, this Prince Edward situation, King of Wands, yeah, Charles. Charles wants to be known as the king making the decisions. He, it was something in him that didn't want to leave the decision up to his father. Uh, he wanted to make sure he put his stamp on that decision. That's very interesting. And then the likely outcome of this thing is, uh, ah, okay, we're going to have to do four more cards. So is uh, Wands, Actions, Plans, Forward, Movement. And the Five of Wands is, uh, my Australian friends would say, Argy Bargy would say, pointless arguing, pointless uh, mulling the thing over, uh, wrestling with the decision. You know, it, it was made. Uh, it didn't have to be rethought. So, uh, four more cards. Uh, let's just see if specifically uh, the cards will say that, yes, Prince Edward will get that appointment, that dukedom, that it will go to his family. I think the idea is that they didn't, because because that could be inherited by Prince Edward's son, and I believe there's some talk that perhaps now uh, he may go ahead and grant it uh, to Prince Edward, but with the proviso, proviso that it come back to the crown uh, once Prince Edward is gone and not be inherited uh, by Prince Edward's son. I believe that could be the case. Let's see. So, um, four more cards to more specifically look at if it's going to go to Prince Edward and if they can tell us about what happens when Prince Edward goes. Signifier of that is ah, an abuse of power. Yeah, uh, five of uh, swords, truth, justice, rules, and law, and this is an abuse of power. So this is Charles taking his power to a place that it, maybe it wasn't necessarily, uh, didn't need to go. What's that in the environment of? It's in the environment of, ah, the ten, yeah, <laughs> this is perfect. It's weird how the cards come out this way. Uh, pentacles are, uh, can be wealth, which that dukedom is associated with a good deal of wealth, and a generational value. So it speaks exactly to what I was just saying. Very bizarre, since it chilled down my uh, spine. So yeah, so the Ten of uh, Pentacles is a generational uh, value and in fact familial wealth. And it looks like that is the question. So uh, this abuse of power, this hesitancy on the part of uh, Charles was due to this thought of uh, this uh, generational uh, value. Um, uh, that brings with that dukedom. The hopes and the fears for all of this then is what? Ah, uh, okay, so the hopes and the fears is that um, if he does give it to Edward, the Five of Cups here, Cups are emotional, compassionate situations. If he does give it to Edward, it has been mentioned that proviso, that proviso, however you like to pronounce it, that, um, that it wouldn't be inherited by his heir, but it would return back to the crown. And so this is represented here by a good deal of the, of the compassionate, emotional value of that appointment uh, being lost, spilt, but with some value being left to carry on with. And that would be the wealth that comes with that uh, position would certainly be something Edward could make good use of in his life. Uh, and then the final outcome, let's hope this tells us the final uh, decision and take it right from here is, oh, this is interesting. So the final uh, outcome is um, the nine of, of wands. Again, wands are actions, plans, forward movement. This night has been embattled by all these um, movements, all these plans, all these very fruitful um, distractions, but he still has one left in his hand. And I think that one that's left in his hand is the dukedom. So the likely outcome of this is that there will be a struggle and, or there has been a struggle even, and that uh, he will get the um, the dukedom, Duke of Edinburgh, and, uh, but it will uh, mean that I believe that he's gonna have to give it back to the crown. It'll go, it'll go back to the crown after he's gone. That's what I think. So to read it all again, uh, uh, we say that, look, the whole thing is that uh, Charles decided to look at this from another perspective. And uh, this Knight of Wands 
is uh, Edward, it looks like, making his case for why he should get it because Dad left it to him. The basis of this whole thing is Charles wanted to show that he's victorious, that he's in charge. Uh, he wants to get his accolades for being king right now. And in the past of this, uh, so what he had considered was let's think about this carefully before we move forward. Uh, and the sky of this reading is the fact that Charles wants to be known as the king who does take command, who does make direction, and the likely outcome of it at that point, at this up to that point, was that it was useless, pointless arguing. Because why? Because it had been well thought out in advance before it came into Charles's purview. And then whether uh, Edward will actually get the the dukedom here is that it was kind of an abuse of power. It was Char uh, King Charles unnecessarily overreaching. Uh, and the environment of this generational value which that uh, dukedom has, carries with it, and the wealth that comes with it, and the like, and the hopes and the fears is that um, the hopes is that Prince Edward would still get to have the dukedom benefit from its uh, riches and its prestige, uh, having lost the, the value of it passing on to his son, but having uh, a little bit of the value left to carry on with. And then the likely outcome is that in the end, he does have it. He's holding that plan in his hand. He's been beat up. Uh, but I think what that's telling us is that he's um, going to have to uh, give it back to the crown uh, when he dies. That's what I think. So mark that down in your calendars. Let's see how that goes. So let's put these back and address that second issue that George Santos situation. Okay, so so he married. You know, this is something that does happen a lot. People marry not for love when they're uh, aliens to this country, but uh, for the purpose of gaining U.S. citizenship. And whether that's right or wrong, uh, who knows? Certainly someone uh, two uh, straight people, one being an alien, one being an American citizen, could decide to get married. One of them could feel like they were in love and the other one could kind of know that they were doing it for some other reason. Um, in the gay community, uh, I'm sure there's many instances where perhaps uh, a lesbian and a, a homosexual man uh, may get together as friends and say, you know, let's get married. Uh, you can benefit from my uh, U.S. citizenship. And uh, once we got that done, we'll just divorce. And if that's the case, you know, it's up to someone else as to whether that is, uh, it's legally wrong, but whether it's morally wrong, it's up to someone else. Um, but that could be the case. And, uh, and then the other thing is that, was George Santos really in love with this woman or felt like he was in love with this woman or did he give it an honest try to be uh, married to a woman uh, with in the back of his mind knowing oh this is a good way to get my citizenship um, and you know with what we know about George Santos it seems like what's best for George is the first consideration in all the lies and the mistruths and the unfortunate way that he conducts his life that's how it seems uh, logically to me and that's not even using intuition that's just you know when someone reveals himself to you believe them you know one two three chances I that doesn't work in my life you know, once I know who someone is I believe them once you reveal to me who you are I take that to heart and I know who you are now and now I know how to deal with you I might not eliminate you from my life but I know how to deal with you in the future so George Santos and that marriage what can the cards tell us in six cards about that situation? Can they even sort that out? Because there's three options there. Uh, real love, uh, maybe it's just two. Real love or just to get something done. Six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. And it occurs to me that if the cards can also, I'm asking a lot out of six cards, but if they can let us know, whether this will be a point of contention uh, to maybe trip up George Santos and put an end to all his lies and his uh, being in that office in a completely unfair way. Signifier card is an abuse of power. This was an abuse of power. This was not an honest situation. This was someone taking advantage of truth, justice, rules, and law. The challenge to that is making a decision. Oh my goodness, the cards are getting right to the point. Making a decision. Someone had, uh, a few people had to make a decision. George had no decision to make. This was a way for him to get his citizenship. 
this is the way he was going to go. He was going to apply pressure to whomever he finally zeroed in on to get that done. And this is a woman here, um, a bit androgynous, okay, uh, having to make a decision about how she's going to conduct herself. The basis of this reading then is, ah, look at that. <laughs> this is the lover's card. This is um, uh, just in fact that. And so we have, and I always feel like this uh, caduceus uh, up here, uh, right here, is symbolic of oath taking. Okay, that would be marriage vows. This was an agreement. Okay, this wasn't love, I don't think. Uh, this was an agreement. And the past of this reading then is, ah, death. Yeah, it was always uh, doomed. This marriage was always doomed to have a, a finite end. Okay. The uh, sky of this reading for that marriage of George Santos is the Queen of Swords. He is, the, and I hate to say it, you know, with the drag queen situation come up, but he is the queen of uh, his truth, his justice, his rules, his law. And then the final outcome for that, and maybe in this one card it can let us know if he's going to be found out and if it will be used against him, um, is the King of Cups, King of Compassion. So it looks like we're going to have a compassionate outcome as a final answer to this. I think even if it's found out, there will be a compassionate um, uh, haze uh, that covers it to say, look, lots of people are doing this exact same thing and maybe turning our heads and not uh, digging too deep into this is the way to go. So yeah, let's read it again. George Santos and that marriage. Well, it was an abuse of power. It was an abuse of the of the of the way that you can get a citizenship in this country. It was a decision that uh, he was always going to make, but that she uh, had to make, and she f knew full well uh, what she was getting into. She may have even gotten paid. Who knows? But likely not. Um, the um, basis of the whole thing is that oath taping, taking that had to be taken two lovers, supposedly two people, a man and a woman, in this case, coming together to take that oath. That was the basis of this whole reading. And in the past of this was that it was always doomed to have a finite end. It was never going to be a marriage for the ages. In the sky of this was George Santos himself taking truth, justice, rules, and law into his own hands. And then the final outcome is that it probably won't be held against him. Uh, there will be a compassionate, uh, with this King of Cups, a compassionate layer over all of this. And this won't be the item, if there isn't one, in fact, that takes him down. Interesting. Now, the final thing we're going to talk about is Mike Pence. Okay, Mike Pence and those documents that uh, were found after he had an interview on television and saying, and probably he really didn't think that he had anything. He was hesitant in his answer in an interview I saw on television when someone asked him if he had any documents. He was like, uh, no, I didn't take, no, I, no, uh, no, I didn't take anything. He was very hesitant, but then that's how he, he answers everything anyway. So Mike Pence and six cards, those classified documents, what can the cards tell us about that? What can the cards say about Mike Pence Okay, six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Mike Pence and the classified documents. What can the cards say about that? Signifier card. Okay, King of Swords, truth, justice, rules, and law. I think this is Pence. I think this is Pence feeling like he is... A truth teller. The challenge to that, six of, six of uh, cups. Cups are emotional, compassionate, and so this is is wanting things to be the way they were. When we think about things the way they were, we usually have an idealized image of a better time when things were better, when things were clearer, and, with, and when things were uh, nostalgic. And I think that's the haze that perhaps Mike Pence lives in. So the challenge to him uh, being the ruler of his truth, justice, rules, law is this fog, uh, maybe a dysfunctional um, way of thinking about the past. Oh, wow, when the cards repeat. So a decision had to be made. Okay, so the basis of this whole thing is the decision that was made to take those things uh, to uh, with him when he left the office. Who made that decision? 
Since we're talking about Mike Pence directly, I'm going to say maybe he made the decision. I still find it hard to think that he made the decision knowing that there were classified documents in there, but let's see what the cards finished telling us. In the past of this reading, judgment. Judgment. There was always going to be, it was already determined that there was going to be a judgment in this. I think this is the karmic um, uh, magic that runs through, I think, all of our lives in that this situation it was was always going to happen like this um that's it uh the sky of this is the emperor this is the government this is the united states government this is the emperor is that is the one who signifies to us that this is how things are going to be done when the emperor says it so it will be so and so this is the government uh really ruling over this whole reading and the final outcome then is temperance there will be a balance there will be a um in in the in the uh situation of mike pence having those uh, classified documents it will be balanced out to see do it, it, it's this isn't saying we're going to go full bore and prosecute this guy for some misdeed that he took no there will be a compassionate cups are compassion water is is emotion and so there will be a compassionate temperance applied to this whole thing let's read it again so mike pence and the classified documents well he is wants to be thinks he is as a matter of fact the king of his truth justice rules and law and the challenge to it is his this fog of wanting to remember things in some sort of an idealized emotional way the basis of this whole thing is that decisions had to be made maybe said decisions had to be made quickly and so they were made and then the past of this is just showing us that there was a karmic judgment that was always going to be applied and was even perhaps even the reason why this happened and 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 is revealed now in the sky of this is the emperor which is the um the government uh that's re what that represents to me in this reading uh the government is going to rule over this the law of the land is what's going to make the decisions and the decisions will be tempered with an emotional uh, compassionate um, flavor. So that I think is uh, is a very good answer to those questions uh, today. I like the way all of that came out. Well, those are the three questions for today. The next video I do is going to be about the British royal family, but it's centered around your viewer questions. So stay tuned for that one. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. So this is one of my all-time favorite uh, decks. So this is the Smith Weight a tarot deck, the Centennial Edition. And um, there's two boxes here, and I'll explain what happened. Is uh, when I was ordering uh, uh, this uh, deck, um, I think I think it was Amazon, I'm not 100% sure. But um, it wasn't clear that, that one of the things I was ordering was just a deck of cards, and the other thing I was ordering was a commemorative set. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about them separately. So the cards themselves are terrific. So these are, as you may have heard me say, if you've watched some of my videos and watched me use these cards, uh, these cards are the um, supposed to be the uh, most true to the original artwork of Pamela Coleman Smith. This is her initial, Pamela Coleman Smith. Uh, th these are the closest to her original artwork or interpretation that she and um, and uh, uh, Wait uh, came to agreements on for the way the, they would be depicted. Before I turn these over, I'm going to tell you. So one of the things I love about cards is when you, there's something special you can use the cards for, a special way you can identify with the cards that's only secret to you. Maybe I shouldn't like that, but I do like that. For instance, uh, these cards, you can tell from the back of these cards whether they are upright or whether they are inverted before you flip them over. And here's how. In this uh, little um, uh, flourish here, uh, it's almost a rose and a rose. It reminds me a little bit of the Tudor rose, but it's, it's not quite that. But uh, if you are looking at this card, the back of this card, and you see this little leaf is, is sort of pointing in front of this signature, then you know that this card, when you flip it over, is going to be upright. However, if you see that the leaf is pointing behind the signature, you know that this card is going to be inverted. So see, a quick glance, it's not very obvious to you. But once you look at it for a minute and you know that secret, now you know what's going to happen when you turn this card over. So let's use an example. This one is pointing um, before the signature. So we can see that this card is in the upright position. This one is pointing after the signature, and you can see that it's in the inverted position. So, so there you go. 
Now, the cards themselves are great. I mean, I love the coloring of the cards. They've got kind of a, a grayish, um, a brownish gray overtone, almost a misty, kind of a London fog kind of a feel to the overall. It's like someone painted the cards and then went back and did a treatment on them to make them look kind of so I'm not I don't know if that's how Pamela Coleman Smith uh, created the art I haven't seen her original art for this obviously um, I'm sure some people have but um, but that's what's great about these cards it kind of gives them a built-in patina it's not real you know it's fake but it still makes them nice and mystical and so uh, that's what's interesting about these cards now the uh, at first I was disappointed that I had ordered two um, sets of the same cards, but then um, I understood that it was a good thing, and I'll show you why that is. Okay, so now this is the commemorative set of the Pamela Coleman Smith uh, artist of the Rider Waite Tarot deck, uh, featuring the Smith Waite Tarot Centennial Edition deck, which is this. So uh, it comes in this amazing amazing container. I mean, I can't even really call it a box. It's, it's like a beautiful showcasing a lifetime of artwork by Cam Pamela Coleman Smith. And um, so it's really cool. And wait till you see how it works. So you open this treasure chest up and you've got this beautiful uh, finish here and you've got wonderful little tabs where you can pull back the, uh, the covers and see what's inside. And what is inside is a, a pack of of the cards uh, and in truth what's happened is um, these were the cards that were wrapped up inside this box and uh, these cards uh, came in that box but um, I got this first and so I wanted to use the cards so I opened it up and oh look at that and I don't like that this has to be tucked down in there so there's a couple things that aren't perfect but uh, so I took the cards out of here opened it up started using them and then the other cards came and I realized oh well I can make this a complete set if I put these in here what's in here of course, you have the cards, and uh, then you have a nice little bag uh, to keep them in if uh, if that's how you're going to keep your cards, and so many people do. But uh, I've just chosen to try to leave these cards in kind of a pristine condition. And then on this side is where all the treasure happens. The first thing you have is this booklet, The Artwork and Times of Pamela Coleman Smith, Artist of the Tarot, Tarot of the Rider Waite Tarot Deck by Stuart R. Kaplan and Lynn uh Arjo, I suppose. So this is who wrote this book. In this book, it tells you all about, uh, you know, not all about, but it's, 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 it's a very good information about Pamela Coleman Smith. It's a lot of her art that's not related to tarot and explanations of how that art came to be. I mean, this is just a fascinating book and I love it. I love it a lot. So there's that. The next thing that was in here, are, these are actually postcards. Okay, so these are postcards, and all of these are the art of Pamela Coleman Smith. So, uh, and then this book talks about these postcards and why they come to be, and they all have a very interesting uh, story. So, which I won't go into now, but if you think you'd like to know, you should order these cards. So, very interesting uh, stuff here. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, next thing you're going to get is you get some uh, larger pieces that uh, this is. Pamela Coleman Smith, who I understand like to be called Pixie uh, as a nickname, and she's a lovely person. This um, is uh, someone that she knew, a, a stage uh, actress at the time, and um, and there's even a little uh, message down here. The the name of this person is Mistress Page, and then you are a you are Mary, so am I. Ha ha, uh, Ellen Terry. So uh, I'm not sure now, but the, the book explains all of this to you. Then you get, uh, this is an example of just some black and white work she done for, for, I don't know what it doesn't tell you on here, but it does tell you in the book. And then this is some more examples of what she might have done for playbills or uh, other ways. You know, artists have to make a living, so they use their talent of making art to uh, sell and, and do other things. So love, love, love everything that came with this. And um, amazing. Now, the final thing, and I've, I've lost a little uh, ribbon, but also this uh, has a ribbon here that, that helps you pull everything out, which is so smart and so good. I don't know who thought of it first, but it's a great uh, use of that. And then you have here the actual uh, pictorial key to the tarot. So some of you may have seen me using uh, this book, which is the pictorial key to the tarot by weight. And uh, so this is just another uh, representation of that, but just in a different book. And it all comes in here. The one thing that you're missing here, I don't think the cards are in this book. No, the pictures of the cards uh, aren't in here, 
but it's terrific. Everything else is true to that first book. Uh, this one, however, which I bought separate from an uh, online bookstore, uh, does have uh, depictions of the cards in it, as you can see. So that's very useful to use that all the time. So very handy to have. And then finally, like so many of these uh, decks, this gives you some uh, examples of some spreads you can use and how you might read them. And so everything, everything, everything about this um, this package uh, is exactly um, the best that you'd want to get in a, in a, in a gift. I've got, this is the one little misgiving here. Maybe I'll, I'll work on that later. But um, so nice. So that's been the tour of these cards. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Well, coming back tomorrow, I'll be doing it all again. So, ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.